many of us have our own ways in which we try to live sustainably. But for people like permaculture expert Andrew Jameson, it's a way of life. He shared his skills on how to be mindful about the impact we have on our environment. The home that we've created here, you could call an eco-home or a sustainable home. It's built very much along the lines of a permaculture design process. So a lot of what we did was with renovating the home was placing emphasis on making it non-toxic and then ensuring that at the end of the life cycle of those materials that they could go back to the earth and biodegrade in a way that wasn't going to be harmful. So this is a timber home. So all of the wood that we've used is actually biodegradable, not just in the sense that untreated, but it's treated with a biodegradable wax. I now have a permaculture design business. It's called Leaf and Stone. Permaculture is defined as the design and creation of human habitats that are beneficial to all life, essentially. Everything that, that humans need to live and sustain themselves in a way that is in harmony with nature and beneficial to all forms of life. All of this is growing as a forest, essentially. And what we're trying to do is mimic the ecosystem of a forest and grow food at the same time. The reason we do that is a, a forest is essentially the climax of an ecosystem. You know, we're not just reusing a piece of land over and over to grow the same things. We're actually building soil, which is sequestering carbon. We've got loads of diversity here in terms of animal life and insect life and plant life all interacting as an ecosystem, and that's what we want. So this is our insect hotel. This is a great example of permaculture because what we're doing here is creating a little habitat for insect life, essentially. Yes, inevitably, some of these things are gonna eat some of the plants we have here, but ultimately, a lot of them will eat the bugs that'll eat the vegetables. So we're creating an ecosystem that is in balance. This is our grey water system. All of the house's grey water runs down via gravity and then it ends up here in what's called a banana circle. The reason we use bananas is they love water. A banana tree drinks about 25 litres a day so there's about 10 bananas here, so that's 250 liters a day. A banana tree produces its bunch and then it's done, unfortunately. Then we chop down that banana tree and it goes back into the middle to feed the rest of them. So that's kind of how the cycle works. Let me just show you a few of the materials that we've used in the renovation. It's a timber home, so there's a lot of wood it's obviously a great building material because it's pulling carbon out of the air, which is great. It's renewable if done correctly. A lot of the plaster that we did in the house is, um, it's called tudlucked. And it's a process of mixing lime with a very fine sand. You take a stone and you polish the plaster and there's a chemical reaction that forms that makes it completely waterproof. All of the sand that we used to do this came from the building site and that was perfect for the plaster. Wouldn't be much point in having a sustainable home when the car you drive is probably the biggest contributor to climate change. So the solution to that for us was to run the car on biodiesel. Biodiesel is recycled vegetable oil from restaurants. The biodiesel is carbon neutral because whatever carbon the car is going to burn when it burns the fuel is taken in by the vegetable plants that are grown to make the fuel in the first place. So whatever you let out, you take in. Growing the food you eat is one sure way of knowing where it comes from and how it has been prepared. You know, even a lot of organic certified produce is still not that good for you. So growing food in your garden in healthy soils you know, gives you food that you can be 100% convinced has nothing in it that's bad for you. And furthermore, the healthier your soil, the healthier the plants are. So basically, the more goodness you're getting into the soil, 
the more nutrient dense the food becomes. Even to the point where the, um, the bacteria that live on these plants are actually super good for your gut. It creates a really diverse uh, microbiome, which a lot of studies are showing now that is really, really important for, um, for health. So when I asked the question of why, why sustainability, why an eco home? I mean, there was something I was always passionate about in two senses, one out of maybe a sense of responsibility or you know, what can I do or how can we live differently? For me, it was really, really important to be able to live in a way that was sustainable. And I guess our, our homes are the biggest footprints that we have in many ways. Of course, all the food waste that is left over goes back into the compost bin. The thing with living a sustainable lifestyle is that it's a journey. One doesn't need to be doing everything 100% correct and 100% sustainably. One can start with very small actions. I think in the long run, that's far more beneficial than expecting everyone to be living a perfect 100% sustainable lifestyle. Andrew Jameson helps remind us that in nature, nothing goes to waste. And he encourages us to get excited about the role we can all play in sustainable living. Get more of the Insider Essay online. Follow, connect, engage, and be inspired to live better with the Insider Essay. Watch the show Monday evenings at 5.30. Repeat Saturday at 1 on S3.